squish, squish, bish. This is the new ZoomX Invincible from Nike, their latest long distance trainer that utilizes the revolutionary ZoomX midsole foam to achieve an incredibly soft and bouncy ride, perfect for go long comfort. Now don't let the shoe's hideous facade fool you. Behind that wide blocky exterior, mundane color palette and thick heel build lives one hell of a running experience that delivers so much soft and springy cushion, even Hoka would drop its keys in the bowl. The Flyknit upper, padded tongue, full rubber outsole with micro traction, thick boy ZoomX midsole, and substantial build all come at a monstrous price. But I'm not gonna lie, this shoe is awesome as a daily trainer. It's not without its quirks and weird issues, but the ZoomX Invincible is the new bringer of smiles. Let's dive into today's review. Ginger Runner. What is up everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Today's review is a fun one because it's a shoe that I'm pretty excited about. I've also tried not to read or watch any other reviews or get any other information on the shoe because I wanted it to be just pure. So today's review is all about the Nike ZoomX Invincible. Getting a little braggy there, aren't we Nike? As always, before we dive into the review, I have to point out that this shoe was provided for review by Running Warehouse. I'm under no obligation to say anything about the shoe. I can say whatever the hell I want. No one has to watch this review before I post it. It's all just my thoughts, my opinions. Let's get into it. I like to talk about the things I like and dislike about everything in review, starting as always with things that I like. Zoom X Cushion. This is this shoe's main selling point. You are getting it because of the Zoom X, obviously not for looks. Uh, this thing is soft, it's super cushioned, uh, has a nice bounce to it. Nike's been using ZoomX in a handful of their shoes. This is really their first kind of daily trainer, meant to go long, give you plenty of cushion, a uh, really big stack height, while also not having any sort of plate at all in the shoe. What we're left with is this extremely soft and airy, light, pillowy cushion with a lot more bounce and momentum than I was expecting. Uh, really, the result is just one of the most comfortable shoes that I put on my feet. It is so soft, so delicious, nom nom nom. It truly is unlike other midsoles that I've experienced and what Nike is claiming is their highest energy return midsole. Uh, it really does the job. It surprised me, I'm happy with it. And that is really what sets this shoe apart is that Zoom X. Mm -hmm. The upper, I am liking the fly knit upper that they're using in this shoe because it is so accommodating. I think so many different foot types are gonna feel right at home in this shoe. We'll talk about fit in a minute, but what you get with this fly knit upper and the overall material choices is a comfortable, accommodating padded upper that protects and essentially hugs your foot in a nice layer of comfort. Ultimately, it's been a joy to run in and hasn't caused me any major issues. I'm digging the fly knit here. I think it works well for what this shoe is. And finally, fit. So what I was worried about with this shoe is that the fit would be sloppy. Uh, a lot of the times with Nike shoes that are really high padded, more daily trainer sort of oriented shoes, you don't get a really good lockdown in the shoe. It, they do tend to be accommodating for so many different foot types that it really doesn't excel in one area. The difference with the ZoomX Invincible is I think a lot of people will get a good fit out of it. Uh, with the wide thick laces, the gusseted tongue, the extra padding around the heel and a really good structured heel counter, the shoe itself will tie down and fit to your foot in a more precise manner than you would expect from something that's just meant to go long, more daily trainer, more accessible to various foot types. So it does a better job than expected. And I wanna just make sure I point out uh, that many of you might also experience the same thing. It's just nice to have a shoe that utilizes top end materials like Zoom X and the Flyknit that isn't really alienating. So you don't have to have a specific foot type. It's accommodating, will work for a lot of different people. will give you a really nice lockdown and attachment to the midsole. Uh, it, it works quite well in the fit department. And that's a huge like for me. That being said, it's not all Snyder cuts and nifty drops. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the ZoomX Invincible. Let's get to those now. Price, so clearly the shoe is a lot of money. It's a $180 shoe. Any of the Nike shoes that utilize ZoomX are expensive. Uh, this is no exception. So I think that is going to be a major gripe with a lot of people that are looking at this shoe is just that high price point. The other reason that's a dislike aside from wallet impact is just the fact that I have about 70 to 75 miles on this shoe. I am not able to determine at this point how long it will last. So your dollar to mile ratio uh, may not be as good as other daily trainers that go the long distance. Uh, again, I'm a bigger runner, so I'm definitely gonna be compressing this midsole sooner. So far it's holding up really, really well. There hasn't been a lot of degradation in that midsole. I'll report back in the comments, the more miles that I get in the shoe, I will be running in this for quite some time, as long as I can. But at this point, $180, 
it's just a lot of money to spend on a daily trainer. You'll probably get your most miles out of the shoe. I just hope that it lasts that long. Stability. So clearly when you take a massive amount of ZoomX material, which is extremely soft and airy and put that all underfoot without any sort of stability board, carbon fiber plate, any of those types of uh, structural elements, you're gonna get a shoe that lacks stability. Despite the fact that the ZoomX Invincible has these large blocky sections that are much wider than the actual strobel board and foot itself, it does provide some structural integrity, even with the rubber outsole providing a little bit of additional structure. The shoe is not without its sloppy floppy. I don't think that's a description I've used before. Uh, it just lacks a lot of that confidence underfoot if you're going around sharp turns or doing any sort of banking or even gravel trail running uh you're just going to run into some stability issues it's something that you will i'm sure adapt to have to point it out be cautious and finally lack of premium details when you're spending 180 dollars on a shoe specifically an entry-level zoom x daily trainer shoe you would hope to have a lot of what nike's more uh, top-end shoes are known for better looks, better material choices, specifically in the laces. They're not long enough. There's a lot of weight back here. The foam itself is really noisy, sounds very hollow. No matter what surface you're running on, it's just gonna make a lot of noise. Uh, there's just a lot of little details that you would hope would have been omitted or fixed in something at this price point, uh, featuring these materials that are of that top tier quality from Nike. But that is it for dislikes. In conclusion, the shoe is pretty dang awesome. If you are looking for an insanely comfortable daily trainer and you don't need a lot of structural or stability elements, you're not looking for a shoe to do speed work or race in, and you're willing to sacrifice precision for comfort, this is something new. It's dramatically fun. I'm having a blast in it and it will be in my rotation as long as it lasts. I'm holding on to this one for a good while. But if you like less girth, you're not really into a shoe that's quite this bulky and big, maybe needs something with a bit more precision, whether in the fit department or in the feel underfoot, uh, this may not be the shoe for you. It is clearly a max cushion, max stack, max accommodating, uh, just daily trainer meant to go long, provide you with some nice fun bounce and a pleasurable experience that might bring a smile to your face. And we all could use some smiles. Nom, nom, nom. Let's get more specific. Build quality. So this is uh, kind of the gray area for me. Again, I have 70, 75 miles in the shoe. And so far it's holding up quite well. I haven't noticed a lot of loss in that bounce, but I have a feeling it will eventually begin to flatten out. But at this point, everything's holding up fine. Comfort, this is the shoe's maximum selling point. It is extremely comfortable, very soft and supple. I am a huge fan of ZoomX at this point, and uh, I think it's one of the best new midsole materials that I've really had underfoot. I'm into it. Comfortable is through the roof. Fit, it is better than I expected. You can really dial it in through the midfoot. The laces are nice and sturdy, though too short. The ankle locks down better than I expected, though way overbuilt. And the fly knit upper is extremely comfortable and allows an accommodating fit. Price at $180, it's an expensive shoe. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I hope you get a lot of miles out of that price point. Uh, so far, it's doing pretty well on my end, but $180 is going to certainly price out a lot of people who are looking for a daily trainer at a lower price point. Might just be worth saving up for though. And finally, looks. I, I, I'm a big meh on this. I'm not a fan of the looks of this shoe. I, uh, there's even this pearl iridescence in the midsole, black and gray up top, red, some turquoise. There's a lot going on. I know Nike's capable of more. <laughs> I just am not really happy with the looks of the shoe. Looks are subjective. Who ultimately cares? I do. Uh, so that's it. Bringing us to our final criteria is the Zoom X Invincible. A buy, try, or a why? At this point, you could probably guess I'm going to say buy. I am going to say that if you have the funds, but really this is more of a try because you're going to want to put this on your foot and experience it because of that Zoom X. It's going to be pretty polarizing. People either really, really like all that cushioning, all that padding underfoot, or it's going to be too much and it's going to just absolutely alienate you. So it's a solid try. I would buy, but most of you may just want to try it before you commit. If you have any more questions or want any more information or want to get a pair of the ZoomX Invincible for yourself, there are links in the description that will take you over to Running Warehouse. They are affiliate links, so they do help the channel. They cost you nothing. Uh, if you would consider getting a pair of these shoes, consider using the link. Um, but that is it. If you have any questions or if you have run in these or you have any comments about Zoom X in general, jump into the comments of this video and let us know what you think of the Zoom X Invincible. It is a spicy daily trainer that I hope you get a taste of. That's it.
for today's review, everybody. If you like this review, make sure you like, favorite, subscribe to this channel. We got new videos, new reviews, and stuff like that happening every single week. You can go back and watch last week's director's cut of Summer of Wonder. I'm really proud of that movie. Uh, go share the experience with Caitlin and Dylan. It's a lot of fun. And right over there, social media links, you can follow us across various social media. At the bottom, patreon.com slash the ginger under, that is how you can support this channel, as well as getting some amazing perks on the back end. We do daily live streams, for example, uh, called Daily Brew. So every day we go live, we talk about running, we talk about gear, we talk about life, everything. Please consider joining the GR crew there at the bottom. Uh, whoop, that's it. Get out there, everyone. Train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. We have some exciting things happening here on the channel here very soon. I'm excited to share those eventually. Stay tuned. Click the notification bell. We'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye-bye.